Hello YouTube, this is Akumajo, and today I'm just going to be uh, making a video about the damage calculator for some of the newer players who uh, don't know how to use it or want to use it to the degree that uh, a good player should use it. Um, and that's honestly just about it. You know, we'll, we won't be spending too much time on Pokemon Showdown. But, um, because we're just going to be using the damage cook and looking at the website, uh, because this is a lot to take in, especially for a new player. Um, I remember being new to 1v1 and being really confused and opting to just min-max my Pokemon. You know, I know their roles in the metagame, so why not just make them 252 HP, 252 attack, or 252 attack and 252 speed, like, what's... What's the problem with that? Fastest and it's the hardest because, well, you don't have to hit extremely hard and you don't have to be as fast as possible. And you don't have to be generally unbulky because you have two other defense stats that you can be looking at. So, first off, I just want to give a quick rundown on the website itself and what each function is. At least most of them because, uh, I'm not going to be looking at these two, one versus all, all versus one. I think this is doubles. But anyways, um, so you can see cl clearly from the top, this is Pokemon Showdown, you know, that's not important to the calculator. Uh, and then you got the generations. This is very important in damage calculation and the sample sets that you automatically get. Um... So you want to, when you're calcing for a certain meta, you always want to click the generation. So Sword and Shield is obviously Gen 8, uh, Sun and Moon Gen 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and so on. Uh, this isn't important. You're always going to be using 100% um, because 48th essentially means like, I think for pixels, like on cartridge. So as you can tell, 36 to 42 pixels. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, we're not playing VGC. We're not playing on cartridge. We're playing on Pokemon Showdown. And percents are just better. In knowing damage calculation and stuff. And then, finally, and then finally at the top. This is one versus one. One Pokemon versus one Pokemon. One versus all. I think it's one Pokemon versus like doubles. We're not going to be focusing on these two. Um, and random battles. Which has... The set's preloaded. So in random battles, the sets are given to you. So literally every single Pokemon has one set, which is 84 is all across the board with, you know, like a, a somewhat optimal set. Except for, it's a uh, <laughs> Scyther, which, oh, yeah, no, because it has heavy duty boots, but it could get a Violite. And I'm like, what is this? But that's not important because... We're just going to be focusing on 1 versus 1. This is a a rundown of the damage calculation from a 1v1 perspective. You know, the metagame 1v1, not like oh <laughs> you. Like I, I think you get the point at this point. And so moving on, we've got uh the calculator itself. So this is the moves that come with the mod. So this is the sample set for Obama Snow, which is at the top because his name starts with A B. Um, A B O because there's Abra, <laughs> but so as you can tell, you can like click whatever moves and it shows the percent right here. So in this situation, it's choice picks of Obama Snow versus choice picks of Obama Snow, 252 attack, uh, Blizzard, which would do the most damage. Um, and yeah, this is just all min max with four like on special defense, but. So yeah, you click the moves, and you can click the moves here for if you want to calc for something on, like, if they're attacking. <laughs> I can't speak, I'm sorry. Um, and that's honestly about it. As you can tell, Pokemon is heavily based on rolls, damage rolls. So there's always a bit of an RNG factor when it comes to it. Although you can essentially uh, calculate for maximum roll, which is the most possible damage you can do. Uh, take or deal so in this scenario okay wait wait no i'm not gonna move on to like how to use the calc yet um 
because you still have the Pokemon selector. You know, you can type Dragonite and Dragonite's going to be there. You can type Naganadel and Naganadel is going to be there. And that's just about it. And one thing I should know is that you don't have to use the sample sets. You can use Dragonite. Scroll all the way down to blank set. And it'll be a completely blank set for you to customize and fill in the EVs. Um, Alright, and moving on. Um, as you can say, see here, it says only show imported sets. So if you want to click that, it'll show sets that you personally imported through here. So, uh, let me see if I have something copied. So like this set, for example, Moltres Galar. You can import it and it'll be right there waiting for you. Moltres Galar, exactly how it is. And you can also export sets, you know, sets you want to use that you happen to either find on the calc or optimize yourself on the calc. Like you change the EVs and such and you want to export it. You can just click here and it'll show up right here. 76. Wait a second. You have to, I'm pretty sure you have to clear it first and then you hit export. All right. Well, <laughs> Maybe the export button doesn't work, but that's not important. Um, you don't find yourself using the export button too much. Anyways, moving on. Uh, you have the type. You can change it just in case, like, your opponent used soak on you. For example, uh, the form. So Moltres Galar would have two different forms. The first one being Cantonian Moltres, aka the original. And the other being, well, Moltres Galar. You can change the level, you know, if you're playing VGC, which we're not doing here. Uh, or level 1 if you're using uh, Fear, which you should not be using. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a it's a gimmick, but um, you won't be calculating for Fear because you'll always be taking, like, max damage. And then, this is probably the most important part, you know the EVs, the stats, because you want to be changing your EVs to survive certain things. So in this scenario, we're flying dark and Moltres Galar actually has like some decent special bulk, but uh oh, uh, Blizzard s still has a chance to kill you from <laughs> a bomb of snow. So what do you do? Of course, you maximize your um, HP, or you can just leave it as is, and then you increase your special defense. So you slowly creep it along until you get the perfect, um, until you get the perfect percent uh, to survive. So. This is optimized. So, in this scenario, you can easily have 248 HP EVs and then just like slowly make your way up. But another important part is that another important part is that um as you can tell here, you survive at 99.2 and that's already like 0.8% which you have. But you can easily decrease your HP so you don't have to use as much EV. So this is four points, another four points. So you, we've already shaved off eight points of EVs uh, off of HP and you still manage to survive Blizzard. So that's another part in 1v1 that you want to focus on. Um, just calculating and using as little EVs as possible. So this is optimized to survive a bomb of snow now which is largely unimportant especially if it has like ice shard for example except no because if it's using ice shard then it will not be choice specs um and in turn blizzard will do less so you always want to calculate to survive like the most possible damage and if pokemon needs its b tier you can just calculate to survive timid or jolly 
Um, moving on, uh, this is where you select the nature's uh, ability if you're using balance hack mods or something. Item that's also important in terms of getting choice specs or choice band to do maximum damage. Because Hurricane is obviously going to kill the Bomb of Snow. Um, moving on. I mean, alright. One thing I should clarify is um, in this specific bubble scenario, a Bomb of Snow has Snow Warning, so you won't be surviving. Like, it will still kill. So, in that scenario, you'll still have to calculate it so you can survive Blizzard and still take Snow Damage. So, in that scenario... Um, you will be increasing your special defense to survive at least 7%, so you want to have 92.9. So here we go, 92.7, 93.7, so, and then 92.9, this is perfect, this is as perfect as it gets, you survive the attack and you survive Blizzard. So yeah, uh, moving on, status healthy, if you're poisoned, burned, also want to take that into account, especially if you're a Gutsmon, you're burned. And then this is to choose, uh, oh, I almost skipped over this, this is to set your HP to 1, for example, and you can use Flail. <laughs> And it'll be base uh, 200 power, but this is not important. <laughs> you won't be doing much with uh, Moltres. And that's essentially about it. Um, I mean, alright, I should probably go over this. This is to set Electro Terrain if you're using uh, a terrain setter such as Rillaboom or Tapu Koko. Uh, Misty Terrain to have Dragon type attacks. Psychic terrain to increase the power of psychic type attacks. And then this is just weather, you know, this is very specific scenarios, you know. You don't you won't be using weather a lot, um, especially in 1v1, because there are no weather teams since you don't have a weather th setter and switch out to your weather sweeper. And finally, uh stealth rocks, not important, not important. Protect for Z moves. We should probably know that's probably for specifically for Sun and Moon because you want to protect and you want to actually no because there's also national decks which also use Z moves. But in this scenario, uh, Aegislash can still use its Z move. Uh, you just have to set it to Z. And it will be doing damage through protect. So it's one fourth the damage. Tailwind for speed, and that's essentially it. That's the basic rundown for the damage calculator. Of course, you can access it by going typing calc.com. You can do slash calc or slash calculator. Um, and you can click on the link and that's essentially it so yeah thank you guys for watching and if you want to see more educational content like this you know talking about more basic things and what you want let me know um this is a bit of a different video oh wait this is the wrong website <laughs> um but hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully you you know took away some sort of knowledge and for calcing in terms of calcing so yeah that's about it thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time please tell me ah, all right